Thank you for listening to Christ Alone Podcast, where we believe that Jesus lived, died, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Our hope is that God can bless you through this week's episode. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Angie and Steven's podcast. Cross Alone. Cross Alone podcast. Uh, so we want to welcome everybody back. I know it's been a while, a couple weeks, maybe a, a, just over, what, two months. Um, we apologize for that. Um, we took a vacation at the end of June, which was sometime when we recorded our last episode. Uh, I'm sorry, we took a vacation the first week of July and, uh, and, uh, and that was it. We, uh, we took that week off and, and then we stayed off. Uh, yeah. major reason for that is, um, maybe if you, if you guys listen to like father, like daughter podcast, uh, it's been even longer that I didn't record that one, like an extra week or two, but that's because the baby who is now, uh, one year and a month uh she's uh consuming uh, our time and she requires more than one person typically to pay attention to her on top of that um the counselor here um has started school and had to prepare for that and now with the craziness of school um it has been extremely difficult to be able to coordinate anything so we do apologize for that um uh, but we are back and um you know, we ask that you forgive us. Um, and uh, don't forget to share the podcast and uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep reminding people that we are still doing this, um, yeah. you know, and God willing, we'll keep doing this and who knows until when. Um, but, um, you know, uh, we started this because we wanted to address misconceptions about Christianity, maybe address other religions um, and talk about uh, more difficult topics that aren't regularly discussed at church. Um, so, you know, that's what we're doing. Today's topic will be the Holy Trinity. Um, there are, you know, um, within Christianity, uh, I think, I think for the most part, in my experience, um, most Christians that I know accept the Trinity. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I didn't know that there was a whole bunch of Christians that reject the Trinity. And that, to me, is, it's, it's difficult to accept because, as we will discuss, you know, the Trinity, I think it's, we can infer the Trinity from Scripture. Um, the word Trinity is not used, but, you know, neither is pedophilia or uh, transgenderism, um, but we can infer these things from, you know, from the context of what's, you know, what scripture says. Um, right. So welcome back, counselor. Um, do you have anything to, <laughs> to say, to add to, I don't know, before we jump right into this? I don't know. You you steal all the words as usual. I steal all the words. <laughs> uh. Well, well. Uh, you steal all of the words. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, we haven't. <laughs> also, we haven't talked in a while, and uh, you know, talking yeah. is kind of my strong suit. Um, but yeah, today we're gonna talk about. <laughs> and, the, uh, and listening is mine. So. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about the Trinity. Um, I think yes. you, you're gonna you're gonna pretty much um, focus on some of the verses that are, are very explicit and say, you know, this is the Trinity, um, so yeah. to speak. Um, and then maybe I'll talk more about the maybe the practical or logical way of um, coming to terms with the Trinity. Um, so yeah. people reject it because they say it's impossible. How could three persons be one person or three in one, one in three. And like, it gets really confusing. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so, yeah. I, and I've heard people explain it this way. Uh, the Trinity is not one plus one plus one. It's one times one times one. And 
again, for the analytical or the mathematician, they're like, well, that math is wrong because you can't do one times one times one equals three or whatever, whatever they try to, you know, to, yeah. to say. Um, but I, I personally, I, I used to think of when I thought I understood the Trinity, that's what I used to say um mm -hmm. is that it was one times one times one um but but we'll you know i guess we'll talk about this let's let's jump right in <laughs> yeah um i i, I was gonna ask really quick because i yeah. know you said that there are some people who don't believe in the trinity would you say that that people who don't believe in the trinity aren't exactly christian um i think it i think it depends um i I, I mean, the Trinity, I would uh, confidently say that it, it is part of, of God's nature. It's part of what makes God the maximally great being that we worship. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll, I'll discuss why, you know, when, once we start jumping more into it. Um, but, yeah. but I don't think that not understanding it disqualifies you if, if no not, uh, not 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 understanding because plenty of people don't I, understand well it. i think i well i, think, <laughs> I don't think we fully well here's the thing it, well but I, I so here's here's what i say i honestly i i think that on on our in our level of understanding i think it's clear i think it's simple i think people make it out more than than it actually is even though it it is more than that and okay. you know i've said it before if we could quantify how big god is and our understanding of god we are a you know subatomic <laughs> speck of dust in comparison if god was you know the size of the universe uh so so yeah. you know eh, eh, will we ever know uh, the the full <laughs> scope uh and uh, and understand god i hope so i don't know uh i will find out uh um, yeah. maybe soon <laughs> but uh yeah I, I i think that if you reject the trinity i think that there is a disconnect between you and god yeah um, because we understand that the holy spirit reveals these things to us you know reveals the truth of god uh in scripture and and that's what allows us to you know get those revelations from scripture that god has already you know inspired through the authors right. and i think that if if we're rejecting that um then you know there's there's definitely i think it's concerning i think it's concerning because um then then you're not you're doing what every other religion and philosophy has done is and you're distorting god mm -hmm. so uh, uh you know for example islam Ju uh Ju the judaism and mm -hmm. christianity i would say that um it i would say that we do worship the same god the problem that makes us different is that they've distorted the god that we worship so in essence they're not worshiping the same god um yeah. because they've distorted you know fundamentally uh god's nature and and yeah. you know and what he stands for so that's that's where you know these other monotheistic religions come from that's why you know we're called the abrahamic religions the three major religions judaism yeah. christianity and islam and you know from the outside looking in yes we worship the same god but fundamentally we don't because christianity if we if we are living christianity uh you know by sola scriptura then then Christianity is the one who is, you know, um, who is worshiping God. Uh, you know, uh, the others have just distorted God. Yeah. I feel like I spoke in circles. No, I understand what you said, but yeah, I, I, I mean, on, 
in my thought, it they're completely different gods, and one of the reasons is because they don't believe right, right. in the well, Trinity. I so mean, it's yeah. I mean, yeah. think think of it this way, right? If I if I take an Apple computer and I change out the parts of the Apple computer for something that goes into an HP, even though the outside of it might look like an Apple computer and might, you know, with the software still kind of function like one, uh, it it's not an Apple computer if the internal components have been changed. And and right. and, and that is the distortion that I that I that I'm talking about. Um, which is what right. Islam has done and what Judaism continues to do as well. Right. So let's start off with uh, with how to practically understand the Trinity. And then uh, we'll, the second part, we'll go into what the Bible says about the Trinity. Okay. Um, so I, I, I was trying to think about where to start. Um, I don't know if, if anybody recalls, um, I, I am working on a book and I, I, I just recently finished the chapter on the Trinity. Um, and so, um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I don't think I am. I don't presume to be. Um, but I, I do tend to look at things and maybe it's my, you know, mechanical uh, inclination, but I, I try to look at things you know, in a practical way, in a thing, in a way that makes logical sense um, and easy to understand. And so I think that, and maybe we've talked about it before here, um, I think the easiest way, one of the easiest ways to understand the Trinity is um, to look at, let's say, the U.S. government, right? If we look at the U.S. government, there are three branches. There's the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. Mm -hmm. And the executive branch is not, does not perform the, the you know, the duties um, and is not the uh, judicial or the legislative. The same goes for the judicial. The judicial cannot perform the duties of the executive and is not the executive or the legislative and Again, for the legislative, it is not the uh, executive or the judicial or, and cannot perform its duties, their duties. So while individually each of these branches is the government on its own with its own duties, at the same time, the three of them together are also the same U.S. government. So mm -hmm. they are the three in one. And so the Trinity is the same way. The Trinity is three persons, or uh, what I call tri-conscious. It's a tri-conscious being. And, um, you know, if you re read the book Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, Nabil explains it in this way, um, or in one of his lectures, if I remember correctly, where he says, you know, for example, I'll use me as the example, the way Nabil explained it, uh, you know, uh, what, what am I? What, what being am I? I'm a human being, right? That's me. That, that represents uh, what I am. And, but I'm also Stevens, and Stevens represents who I am. And so in the same way, the God being represents what God is, what, what the nature of God is. And uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit individually represent who God is. And I know it's a little bit hard to wrap your head around because immediately um, I, I think a lot of our brains jump to, well, hold on. So is it one God or three? Right. Yeah. Honestly, with with that specific example, I personally don't like that example that uh, Nabil gave. Um, no offense to Nabil, um, but when I when nation of we're a human being, but we have a, uh, you know, we have a, I guess we have different parts to the being. It doesn't make sense to me in in um, comparing it to God because to me it sounds like you're saying. Like, there's like, one, like, there's one, because there's one, we only have one consciousness. Like, there's not three conscious minds in me. So that's why I don't think it's the best example. 
The government one, I, I understand, and I think it's a good example, but uh-huh. the being one, I, I don't, because it's it's all the same person. I can describe you as a being or a person or your soul, but you're still, you, you, has, you have one mind. You oh. don't have conversations with yourself. Right. I don't understand what you're, what you're getting at. Like God is three different, like you said, three different persons. Right. And they're in relation with one another. And we see in the Bible how they're in relation with one another. But if you, if you take the comparison that Nabil gave and you say, I'm a human being with what a soul and different, I'm still the same person. No, he said, I'm the same being. But, uh, but Nabil describes who I am. The thing is that with, with Nabil or with us individually, that's where it stops. We're, we're one being, one person. That's, that's where it stops for us. Mm-hmm. With God, it doesn't stop there because God is one being with three persons, three consciousness. It's, it's like, um, it's like uh, you know, taking a square. A square is a square by itself. But if you look at a cube, a cube is just made up of six squares. Mm-hmm. So... You know, it doesn't, the, the, the square isn't negated because now it's part of the cube, um, if sure. that makes any sense. Um, and each side of that cube as a square is performing its duty that composes it as, as, a, as you know, the whatever, the single thing. The difference is, is that with God, th- it, like you said, it's a perfect relationship. Um, it, it's not to be confused with, you know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are each one third of the God being. Um, they are each fully God, but they represent the same thing. And so I think maybe that's what's hard for people to wrap their heads around. And right. so I think here's the thing. I think that we've fallen into a generation where we feel the need to know the answers to everything because Mm -hmm. everything is literally at the palm of our hands, right? In our phones, we could, we don't know a word. We don't know how to pronounce it. We don't know what to say. And all we have to do is ask Siri (laughs) or Google it. And, and then it, we find out, we find out what the answer is. If I don't remember when, you know what? What was the the exact date and time that that uh, you know uh, I don't know that we landed on the moon? And you know I can just Google that. Um, but you can't do that with things that we don't have full answers to. Right. Um, and so I think that the problem is, like I was saying, in this new age of technology and information we have gotten spoiled with having to know the answers to everything. And I think that's what maybe sets Christians apart in that sense, is that even though, yes, we want to understand God the best that we can, yes, we want to get closer to Him and understand things, just everything, and just in general. I mean, who doesn't want to know more, right? Who doesn't right. want to be more, uh, uh, add more to their uh, intellect? And... And I think we could all agree that we all want that. But the difference is, is that with Christians and when it uh, has to do directly with God, we're, we're okay in accepting the, the mystery and, you know, the not knowing of that, fully not knowing. Um, like I said, I think accepting and trying to understand the trinity in the terms that we're discussing them right now is probably as far as we're going to get until we are in you know face to face with with Jesus right um i, I think you know there's going to be a significant amount of revelation um that will just you know be a part of us right um, so, so yeah, so that's the hard part. Now, how do I come to terms with this? I, I use the dog example. I always use the dog example. You know, if I sit there and try to explain to my dog every day why I'm going to work and why he's not going to see me for a couple of hours, you know, 
a- anybody that catches me doing that would call me crazy and would say that's a waste of time. No matter how many times you explain it or how many different languages, your dog will never understand what you are saying. Right. Or even why. The, the, the dog just is and acts on instinct. Um, and so and the reason for that is because the dog is not on the same level or realm of understanding that I am. Yeah. And so in the same way, how can we as single conscious beings <laughs> fathom that we could ever understand a tri-conscious being? Yeah. It reminds you know, me of the verse where it says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. Amen. That, I mean, that right there says it, right? Now, another good example that I have is one that I include in my chapter where Carl Sagan discusses different dimensions, right? And he explains how when you see an object in three dimensions, when you look at its shadow, the shadow is projected in two-dimensional form. And when you try to take the measurements of the actual object in in three dimension in the three dimensions that we live in and then compare them to the to the measurements of that same exact object on a two dimensional shadow they're not equal but it's the same exact thing right right and so so then he goes on to explain how we can't fully understand a fourth dimension but even though we cannot understand fully what a four-dimensional uh, object would look like, if we take, um, if we take uh, the measurements of a uh, a three-dimensional object, we can project them, right? We can project them in a way that gives us the projection of what the shadow of that four dimensional object could be so we we will never understand what that fourth dimensional object will look like but at the very least is we can talk about it you know we can describe right. it and so that's that's kind of how it is with the with the trinity is we we may or may not ever fully understand the trinity um but again i hope we do but but we can at least talk about it in terms that that makes sense and that's rational right. and logical and i think this is one of those ways and i think the yeah. hardest thing that people uh one of the hardest things that people have in accepting this is you know what other examples of of trinities are or what 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 else exists out there that could you know make it easy for us to say well if this exists in in three forms but it's still the same thing part of the same thing then then why can't god also be a you know a a three person one being right and so we can look at science for that we can look at things around us for that uh an easy example i won't go into nitrate resonance structures because i barely understand that um uh, I, I do briefly discuss it in my chapter but I'll just use space, time, and matter, right? Space, time, and matter, that is a a continuum that forms the reality that we see around us, right? And that's that comes in three parts. And those three parts represent reality. And you have to have all three parts. That's why it's called a continuum, because if one one of those is missing, then then you don't have. So for example, I think I've we've mentioned it before, right? If you have if you have uh space and matter but you don't have time then when do you put whatever it is that you have and if you have um matter and time but no space then where do you put it and so you have to have all three and yeah. and 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 they can't exist apart from each other uh, right. that that's just how it is and now within those within those three there's another three within those three right if you just take space, what space made up of? Length, width, and height. That's three, right? And if you look at matter, what's matter uh, made up of? Well, solid, liquid, and gas, 
right? And time, what's time made up of? It's made up of past, present, and future. And so, the, the, again, you can't, you know, the reality that we know, that we understand, within, the, within that trinity of trinities, you, you can't have any single missing part. Right. And, and, and they have to exist at the same time with each other and apart from each other, right? Yeah. Because you can't take just the length of something. Even though it exists in in three dimension, it may exist in three dimensional forms. But unless we're talking about a two dimensional form, then you're just doing length and width. Or if you're talking about line point A to point B, then you're gonna do length. But right. they all, they they all, no matter how you look at it, make up space. If we're talking about that particular thing, I hope that wasn't too confusing for our listeners. Um, but I, you know, I, this is something that, you know, that I kind of was on the fence about, you know, uh, as a bootleg Christian, I, you know, I would read some of these verses, right? And it was mm -hmm. like, wait a second, what? What do you mean? I thought Jesus was God. Why is he praying to the, to God? Why is he praying to the Father? Like, what's going on? Right. I thought, wait, what? Jesus is praying to God, but I thought, I thought he was God. And so, it's you know at the first at at first glance it it threw me for a loop and i just i knew the overall facts i knew that there was one god and i knew that for some reason there was the father the son and the holy spirit <laughs> i i think that's i think i think that's probably the most confusing thing especially growing up christian is um or just if you're just looking at christianity christianity is that um one of the commandments is there is only basically there's the only first one commandment. true God. Yeah. There's the first one commandment. true God. There's no other God. God. Yep. There's only there's no gods before God me. God. There's no gods before me or after me. And if you look at some of these religions like we've discussed, I'm sorry, I didn't know if you were done. You cut off and I, I thought maybe you finished. Uh no, I was gonna say that. Um, that if you have any other God beside God, then they're considered idols. Right, right. Um, and so, um, you know, that's, that's, again, that's where some of these other religions distort that. And so, like Mormonism, they believe that the God the Father created Jesus. And, and, that, and that's, that's not the case. I don't know if those are some of the verses that you had in mind. Um, but just off the top, John 1.1. 1, 1, it talks specifically about God's nature in the person of Jesus. Right. Um, uh, you know, and it says that everything was made, you know, by him, through him and for him. And he was there at the beginning, you know, yeah. um, so that he was the word and the word became flesh. And it's very descriptive. And, and you obviously you can tell that that meant Jesus. Um, but uh, yeah. but yeah, those those are, and I know I I said I'd make it simple. I hope that was simple enough. Um, if, if it's not, I'd like to know because I if I might have to, you know, rewrite or edit my chapter and simplify <laughs> it. I just I couldn't think of 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 a simpler way to describe it. And so in, in my book, I I like I said, I I talk about those things. I give those examples in just a little bit more detail. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important that we understand, right? Um, yeah. Because it will kind of also help us in, in our prayer life, how we pray, um, and, you know, and all that. Right. Um, one thing I did want to talk about before going, well, I guess the verses talk about this, but um, I think sometimes some people do understand it as it's three forms, three different God in three different forms. God first as, you know, father, and then he morphs into human flesh and then he morphs into spirit. And it's, it's not that it's not one God morphing into three different kind, you know, three different kinds of himself. Um, because in, in that sense, then in consciousness. 
but it's three. The, the Bible definitely well, identifies God as three different. Right? So if we look at uh, 28, 19, it says, go therefore and make what, disciples of what, all the nations, baptizing them in Matthew. the name of the Father. Matthew 28, 19. Yeah. It, it says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, and we see this throughout the Bible where, uh, more so in the, in the New Testament, where they're identified as three different. Yeah. So it's not one. It, and we see we see it even in Genesis, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the spirit of God, you know, yeah. so God created and then the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the water and, and God spoke and there was light and we see Jesus. So um, we see it all throughout. It's yeah. three different. Yeah, and um, and and, I and so often, often they're even in the same place. So I, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> like even we see it also when Jesus is baptized. Jesus gets baptized. The Holy Spirit descends on Jesus, and God the Father says, "This is my beloved Son, um, who I'm well, who I'm pleased with." We see again, and that's in, also in, in John places. Yeah, so we see it in various places where they're. Um, you know, they're they're all there. It's not like I said, it's not the misconception that it's oh, it's just it's 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 one God in three different forms. Yeah. And, you know, and, like we said, it's three three different persons and one God. And this is why I said when when we're talking about ourselves, it stops there. We are human being and Stevens is who I am, human being is what I am, and that's where it stops. Uh, because if it, you know somebody might go ahead and argue, well, I'm Stevens, but I'm also a father, and I'm also a son, and I'm also a a uh, a brother and a, and a, and a right. husband, and so that that's not what that means. And and here's a very maybe a, an easy way to understand why um, actually God being a single person who maybe morphs, like you said, is is not a quality of God because mm -hmm. him, what, what it, you have to ask yourself when you're thinking about God, let's take the word God out of it. it. It makes it easier to think of what is a maximally great being, right? You remember that term from the mm -hmm. cosmological or, uh, right. or one, one of these arguments. Like that, that's your favorite so, way to so, explain God. It is. <laughs> it, it's, max, it's, he's a maximally great being. Yeah, because because I, the word God puts people off for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. You know, it it is. I mean, what it represents is unimaginable and immeasurable. But it, but at the end of the day, God is just a word, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God forgive me if I'm you know screwing up here, but look, right. it, it's just a word. It's just part of our language. Um, so that's why I say maximally great being. And so okay. by definition, a maximally great being is God, right? But right. when we're talking about a maximally great being, you have to look, when you're talking about something that's a quality or a characteristic of a maximally great being, you have to look at these two things. You have to look at, all right, is what we're talking about, does it make God better? So in other words, is it a better making property or is it a lesser making property? And what I mean by that is, all right, if Stevens is late to work every day, is is being late to work a lesser making property or is or is a better making property that Stevens is on time every day to work? Right. And so that's that's how you determine where we stand on the spectrum of, you know, one end is maximally great being and at the other end is the least. Uh, uh, Maximally worst being. <laughs> I don't even know how to say that in, in the uh, uh, in the opposite way, but but the the least the least less being, I guess I don't know. Um. So 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 you know that's what we have to look at. And so when we look at God in this sense, is is God a single single being, single person that just you know because he's omnipotent, he can just do whatever he wants, and he could you know and omnipresent, he could just you know, be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at the same time. Um, no, th uh, <laughs> that's not right. Because if that's just one single person, then then how does that explain anything about 
what is transcendent about us as humans, right? Our mm -hmm. need to, our need for companionship, our need for, uh, for you know, having some other person, for having relationship. Where does that all come from? And the only thing that could ultimately explain that is God being uh, in three persons who each mm -hmm. have their own function. So you have to then look, all right, is God as a single person who does all these things uh, a greater making property or a lesser making property versus God who is a three person uh, in, in one that is in perfect relationship? I mean, that would explain where the love comes from. You know, you, we could say that we love ourselves, but I mean, how does that explain God being by himself before anything existed and what would have been the purpose? How, you know, how would that have come about? It, it, it's like, would he have had a conversation to himself? I mean, it, it almost doesn't make sense, right? Um, and Honestly, I think you cut off for the last sentence that you said, so I didn't hear it. My point <laughs> is, my you... point is, my point is, is that the way the Trinity explains God's nature uh, makes more sense in the explanation of the reality of our transcendent feelings and what we're pushed towards as people. Um, we want companionship, right? Um, right. Many studies have been done that that show that you know people in, in like people in solitary confinement, people who are in prison and are put in solitary confinement for a prolonged period of time, they they start losing it, and yeah. and, and and so that means that it's it's something that I think people will say might say, hey, this cannot be explained. This this constant and and it's a strong feeling too is to that need to communicate to to touch to speak i mean we've seen what covid has done to many of us right in the in the isolation i you know for those of us that that have more than one person living in the home you know that's hard even being quarantined and being cut off from the rest of the world i can't imagine what people who live by themselves you know going through this what it feels like because i've i've been on my own at at some point and and i could tell you from my own experience that it's it's one of the worst feelings ever not to be able to talk to somebody to communicate to to have companionship for in, in on any level right Perfect. and so th that's why the trinity is the best explanation for that I, I was done talking. Are you still there? Did I lose you? Yeah, you. you could have okay. Been so what I said was that what I said was is that's why I believe that the Trinity is the best explanation for for that. Yeah. It, it explains it explains the re, the reality of us much better. Um, right. Than than you know. And yeah, and I don't know if you said this when <laughs> when I cut off or you cut off, but. I mean, it shows that God, I mean, God did, God didn't, some people think that God created us because he was lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he didn't. He was in perfect, like we said earlier, he was in perfect relationship with, it, with himself. I, again. He didn't need us. If he was lonely, then that is, uh, uh, you know, that, that feeling of loneliness is a negative feeling. And that, right. again, is a lesser making property. And that it would, wouldn't be in a maximally great being. exactly, and so that would that would negate his maximally greatness, right? That makes maximal sense. greatness. Yeah. Um. So now that we've explained it, uh, I I just have a few verses that talk about um. So yeah, the talk about the Trinity in a sense, um, like you said earlier, the tr Trinity is Bible, um. You're, I'm sorry, you're, it, you're, you're cutting out. So like you said earlier, um, the word Trinity isn't in the Bible, but in verses that I mentioned before, like in Matthew, 
um, or in Genesis, we see God as three different persons uh, working in relationship relationship with one another. Uh, there there have actually been some um, people who have tried to add the word Trinity to the Bible. Um, like they've added chapters or I, I think it was in first John. I don't remember what book it was, but people have actually they've tried to add the word Trinity. But uh, thankfully, we have, uh, you know, great a great God who makes sure that, you know, we we have the original texts that don't include that word. Um, but but in spite of that, the word shows if we look at the context, if we look at it as a whole, it shows that there is a trinity, even, even though it doesn't have the word. So um, we see that in, obviously, the Old Testament and the New Testament talk about, um, they talk about God the Father. Uh, I think we see that. I think God the Father is probably, I don't want to say he's talking about the most, but when people think of God, I think they think often of the Father. Yeah. Um, we've talked about before how uh, in our first few episodes how jesus is god right so we see that in as you mentioned earlier first john i mean sorry john one in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god right so uh, and, and that we talked about how jesus is the word um we talked about how uh jesus says that he is the son of man how that's a reference to him being um god we talked about how Jesus says that he is the I am, which is a reference to the Old Testament when the father says I am. Um, so so <laughs> it, it's funny because uh, I'm reading we're reading Mark in uh, Bible study and. Almost in every chapter, even though we know a lot of people say Jesus never says he's God, which we've talked about before, almost in every chapter we see how he 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 subtly says it, but he basically says it that he is God. Yeah. Um. So we see that. I think the hardest part. Uh. I think for me sometimes, because even even me, I I sometimes find myself questioning it, is how the Holy Spirit is God. Um. And see, even some people will say that the Holy Spirit is more more like a force than he is, um, God. In a few verses, I have a couple examples. Um, the one that's probably popular is in Acts 5 in a specific situation. If you guys uh, ever heard the story of Ananias and his wife, basically Ananias and his wife uh, say they're um, giving a certain amount of money uh, to the church and they lie about it. So uh, Ananias basically dies and then his wife lies about it and she dies. But basically, <laughs> I know that sounds like it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, but um, Acts 5, 3 says, uh, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep uh, back for yourself part of the proceeds? Verse 4 says, while it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? Um, and then later it says, why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So um, there's that relation where it says earlier, it says you lied to the Holy Spirit. We see you're lying to God. So it's basically expressing that the Holy Holy Spirit is God. Right. Often throughout the Bible, the Holy Spirit is explained as is specifically explained as the spirit of God. But that's not because he was created by God. Same as just as the son of God, Jesus was not created by God, but because he bears the nature of God. Um, and we see that in first Corinthians two, 10, it says, uh, for the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God for who knows a person's thoughts, except the spirit of that person, which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God, except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we, that we might understand the things freely given by freely given us by God. So. So the Father and the Holy Spirit are as expressed as two different persons, um, but they are both God. Um, and then my last verse is John 14, 26, when Jesus is explaining um, after he leaves, he's going to leave the Holy Spirit. He says, um, 
I'm going to leave the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So I, I think just even in our own relationship with, with God, we, we, we have God the Father, right? We have, we have God the Father who, who, who made the plan for redemption. Jesus who died for our sins and the Holy Spirit is God in us. Um, basically convicting us of that and that he is God and that we are forgiven. So it's his person in us reveals that he's God, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to me. It, it yeah. might, it might not to, 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 to the first comer, but Honestly, here here's what we know. He, these are the facts. The fact is, the Holy Spirit is is the one that that softens your heart and reveals the truth of God in you, in your heart. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the one that lifts the veil, and 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 when you are open and willing, and you repent and you accept Christ, that's when that happens. That's when these things begin to make sense. And so that's why uh, for those uh, that identify as Christians that, that reject the Trinity, I, I can only encourage you to, you know, to pray about it and ask for wisdom and understanding and discernment and to be very careful because um, if you haven't been watching the, the, world, the news around the entire world, uh, we've been saying this for a year now. It, it Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. He's coming soon. He's 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 at the door and and we have to be ready. And you know, uh that's all I'm going to say about that right now. But um yeah. but we just, you know, it, it, it's time to to get off the fence and it's time to to really, you know, get serious about this. Um if you don't believe, I encourage you again uh, open your heart, change your mind, um, uh, allow God to to enter your heart, accept them, repent, and and the Holy Spirit will will reveal the truth in you because Jesus said He's the way and the truth. That means He's the truth incarnate. And I've said this before that if if Jesus is the truth, then then that is the default. The default is Jesus, no matter where you start. Um, if right. you're, if you're, if you're being honest, if you're being intellectually honest about, about your search for truth, you will end up at, at the feet of, of Christ. Um, right. um, as far as, you know, as far as what the Bible says, right. um, now the other thing too, that I wanted to address before we, uh, take off is that, you know, in, in the whole Jesus praying to the father, some people argue that, well, there's a hierarchy within the mm -hmm. Godhead. And, and that's also a, mis, a misunderstanding and a misrepresentation. Um, there right. is no hierarchy because if there was a hierarchy, meaning, you know, the father being first and whoever being second and then third, um, then, then that would contradict God's perfect nature. Um, the hierarchy, again, would not be a perfect relationship and it would be uh, a lesser making property. Um, so mm -hmm. so that again, that right there uh, po points to that. They are they are in perfect uh, relationship with each other. They they are all fully God equal. Right. Um, right. They the 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 father glorifies the son and glorifies the Holy Spirit in the same manner that Jesus glorifies the Father and the Holy Spirit, in the same way that the Holy Spirit glorifies the Father and Jesus. Right. And so one is not the other, and, and, and all of that, they are all equal, and they are all God. Yeah. I know um, there was a verse, and I, I, I can't, I need to find this verse, because I what know, verse? I've read it, I've talked to you about, about it what? before, but but basically, it says that uh, the, just as the father is the head of something like just as the father is the head of Christ, 
the husband is the head of the wife. Something along oh, those lines. Ephesians 5? No, that's what we thought it was, but it's I, I think it's in Corinthians. I'll, I'll have to find it. But basically, it, what it's, you know, if, you know, you're not... Uh, Corinthians 11.3? If you're not... Oh, it maybe. says, it says, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband and the head of Christ is God. Yes. Oh, man. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you're not a uh, machista <laughs> and think that the husband is higher than the wife, then and you understand them as equal, then you uh, it, it's easy to understand this. It's not that uh, it's not that the husband is higher. Have different. You were saying it's not that the father is higher than the son, or the son is higher than the spirit, or any of that. There's no hierarchy. It's just they all have different functions, but they're all still God. Yes. Yeah, and, and in the same way that a husband and a wife become one, um, there we're we you know it's we become one flesh, so to speak, and so. Even yeah. though we are two beings, two persons, uh, we are to function as one being, yeah. two persons. That's what God yeah. calls and, us to. And Jesus would, Jesus would say, he would constantly, like you said, he would constantly talk to the Father, but he would also say, I am the, I am the Father, are one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, yeah, I guess we should have maybe touched on that a little bit more. It's, uh, you know, in, in terms of marriage, right? The husband and the wife, yeah, are considered one flesh, one being, but, mm -hmm. but now two persons, you know, after marriage. And so that's why they're supposed to, like you said, they each have their own function, but they're still supposed to function as one. So if, mm -hmm. if the husband says, no, we're not going to go uh, to your house tomorrow, he's speaking for the unit. Mm -hmm. He's speaking for both him and his wife. And if the wife says, no, we are not going, then she is speaking for both of them. Now, granted, <laughs> granted, we are fallible, right? Right. And the wife may say, yes, we're going. And he says, no, <laughs> we're not. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's going to be some heads clashing. But then again, that, that defeats uh, or or negates the purpose that God had for a married couple, mm. and so Ooh, you're preaching. Again, so, and so again, that's why it's important to always look to God and the example that He has set within His own yeah. nature, so that we can apply it uh, in in us trying to to you know to imitate God, which is what He calls us to be. He wants us to be God like right. in that sense, and that we're trying to at least emulate Him in in one way, shape, or form. Uh, or in many ways, shapes or forms, yeah, and yeah. so and so, marriage is is the one way that we can try to do that, and it's probably the easiest way that probably most most married people might might understand that. Um, and again, yeah, and, and and husbands and wives disagree all the time, but but that's because we're not in perfect relationship with each other, and and it's interesting right. that it, it it doesn't stop there. So you might be thinking, all right, well, to a husband and a wife get married come into one being that's two persons one being how does that explain the trinity well we haven't finished talking that when these two people get married combine into one being in the marriage let's not forget that god is part of that equation and he makes mm -hmm. that a trinity so it's two people coming together into one being with god mm -hmm. so that's another trinity of three persons in one being. Yeah. We come into God, God comes into us into one being. I hope I hope that's clear. I we that, No, that makes sense. That no that makes sense. I thought you were going to say then they have children and then that's no, the third person. No, no. <laughs> no. And that's why I was going to argue with you, but yeah. No. God's yeah, you're right. So so that again, that's again uh, another trinity there and and honestly and and that's what when we leave God out of the equation, it's when we don't function um, yeah. in the spirit. It's when we don't function in God's purpose that he has for us as a husband, as a wife. Um, when yeah. we, we leave God out of it. And uh, this is a little off topic, but 
Um, in reading uh, Revelation, I learned that the devil is constantly in the end. Well, I think in all <laughs> since forever, uh, since he fell, um, he's been trying to constantly um, copy God. So even in Revelation, we see Satan as uh, we see the the beast. We see the false prophet. And, and the then Antichrist. we see, yeah, and the Antichrist. So mm-hmm. he's trying to, uh, he's trying to imitate God, but he, oh. yeah, yeah, he fails and always yeah. will. Um. So so I <laughs> yeah. Listen, I I can't stress this enough. Please, <laughs> I I'm I pray for my listeners. I pray for everybody that listens, that keeps listening, everybody that stopped listening. I pray for everybody that doesn't know Christ. I pray for everybody that um, maybe has lost touch with with, you know, in their relationship uh, with God. I, I pray all the time because I know that the that the end is near. And and I, I don't want to scare anybody into this because that's not what we want to do. But what we it, it, it's really what's going to happen is horrible here on the planet. But but what waits for us that freely accept Christ as Lord and Savior and repent, um, it's, 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 it's not even, there's no words for it. Um, there's, there's, there's not enough language in this world. There's not enough expression in this world to, to explain mm-hmm. um, what, what that's going to be like. And yeah, I mean, remember the architect of, of eternity is, is a tri-conscious being and we are just a single conscious being. So we can't even imagine what that's, what that's going to be like, what's waiting for us. But what we can have confidence yeah. in saying is that it's going to be worth the sacrifice and the submission to God on this planet. Yeah. And, and if you're breathing, you still have time. Amen. So don't don't throw it away. So Amen. Um yeah. Well you can guys can find us at Christalonepodcast.com. All of our handles are Christ Alone Podcast, except for Twitter, which is Christ Alone Pod. And our number is Oh, let me see if I remember that. Our number is four zero seven and uh, seven nine six two eight eight one. Amen. All right. God so reach guys, out. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for listening. Reach out to <laughs> us for prayer requests, whatever it is. We are still here. Follow us on social media. Um, I haven't been posting on Instagram that much because um, they've, I don't know if they've shadow banned us or something, uh, but they've removed the feature where I could look at a post and share it instantly to my story, to our story. Mm-hmm. So that, that account, for some reason, does not have that feature. I've deleted the app. I thought it was a bug. Apparently, they've removed that feature from some uh, from some accounts. Um, I don't know. So, yeah. yeah. So the only way that we can share it to our story on Instagram is if somebody tags us on their story in Instagram. So I'm having to do that on my personal account and just tag us and do it that way because. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. God bless you all. Bye.